Hey there, come on in. Welcome to the 2017-2018 official Weather Decoded Winter Forecast Update. In this update video, I'm going to talk about three key factors that will go into determining this winter's pattern. We're going to go over the models. What are the models saying? And I'm also going to give you my precipitation and temperature forecast for this winter. Okay, so without being said, let's get into it. We also have a contest going on this winter. This is another contest that I'm doing. And all you have to do is comment below where you're from. You know, if you like this video, give give it a uh, like and then comment below where you're from. You can just pick a random city. I don't care. I'm going to pick one winner and they're going to receive a signed 11 by 14 inch print of this supercell that I took in central Nebraska a few years back at storm chasing. So they're going to get 11 by 14 signed print. I'm going to pick the winner sometime in April. I'm also going to select 10 winners and I'm going to give them my snowfall total forecast uh, for their city that they have listed for the winter. So I'm going to select 10 random winners throughout December and the comments for that as well. So comment your guess below. And the reason I'm doing this is I'm trying to figure out kind of where everyone's from. I'm going to start making more forecasting videos and forecasting tutorials. Uh, for different regions of the United States and so that will help me out there so without further ado let's get into this winter forecast we're going to start off with the analysis there's gonna be three key factors here number one is Enzo number two is the QBO and number three is the AO so what the heck are those let's get right into it here we're gonna first uh, look at this map here this is the sea surface temperature anomalies uh, this drives a lot of the weather patterns across North America and the world, really. And uh, we notice uh, there's a this is a uh, reds are above average, like right here. Blues are below average. Uh, this area is uh, something to watch here. There's been a lot of warming up here, and uh, that's going to be causing some more ridging here. And so uh, another area right here is uh, the uh, east coast of the United States, very warm. That may affect the temperature in the northeast and we also got a lot of cooling down here this is where uh, the La Nina El Nino stuff uh, takes place and that's also going to impact our winter so factor number one it's gonna be Enzo this uh, is really uh, the El Nino southern oscillation this is where El Nino and La Nina come from is the sea surface temperatures out in this region okay if they're uh, cooler than average we're gonna get a La Nina if they're warmer than average we're gonna get an El Nino so what does a typical La Nina winter look like? Well, much cooler than average, kind of out in this uh, region right here. Oops, go a little crazy there with the pen, but yeah, so a lot cooler than average. It's gotta be at least negative uh, 0.5 degrees below average, or you know, 0.5 degrees below average for three months or more. Well, what does this winter look like? We do, certainly do have some cooler than average temperatures out in this region. And, uh, you know, kind of varies from zero to two degrees below average. And so we definitely have a La Nina pattern building here. And you can see this over the past month or two. It's starting to kind of cool down in this region. So what are the models predicting? How is this La Nina going to play out throughout the winter? Well, uh, most models, uh, here, here we, we got November right here, December, January, February. January, February, March right here. So this is kind of the area where I want to watch. Most models are converging at about negative you know, 0.75 degrees right here, 0.75 degrees below average. And then you got an outlier, the CFS model. Uh, that's actually a, a, a climate model that we're using uh, to forecast the winter forecast. It's kind of been a little wacky this year. It's a little bit of an outlier. It, it kind of diverges, but it says it's going to be a, a moderate uh, El Nino, uh, but I think it's a little wacky. I think it's going to be a weak La Nina this winter. Now, these are uh, some of the probabilities that uh, the uh, forecasters have made, the CPC, January, February, March, right here. They've got a uh, 60 per, or about a set, about a 65 percent chance probability it's going to be a La Nina right here uh, in this uh, time period. And you can see it begins to drop off as we get towards late winter and early spring. So that's uh, their call. And so what does a regular uh, La Nina pattern look like? Well, our polar jet is uh, kind of off to the north here, and it's going to bring cool, down, cool air down into the uh, northern, northwestern United States, wet weather out into the uh, 
northwestern United States. And also wet weather out here in the exit region of the uh, jet, the common pattern, up in the Ohio Valley with uh, dry weather throughout much of the deep south of the United States. So that's what a typical La Nina winter pattern looks like. Temperatures in November and January, this is what a La Nina pattern looks like, cooler than average for much of the United States, especially northern U.S. January through March, very cool for the northern U.S. and cooler than average for much of the rest of the United States with a little bit above average in the southeastern United States. How about uh, precipitation? Well, precipitation November through January, kind of below average for the southern parts of the United States, especially the southwest and southeastern United States. And uh, January through March, uh, much below average precipitation out in the California southwestern United States with above average uh, precipitation on the Tennessee Valley, maybe in the Ohio Valley as well, and also in the northwestern United States. But this is not the only factor. We've got some other factors that will affect the pattern here and kind of change this up. And because the you know the La Nina is going to be weak, these factors might be a little more noticeable. Number one is or number one here is the QBO. It stands for the quasi biennial biennial oscillation. Very hard word to say there, but that is a, a belt of strong stratospheric winds that wrap around the planet, and it changes every about 28 months. And westerly anomalies, when it's going more west, when it kind of changes to, towards the west, that's a positive QBO. And easterly is a negative QBO. Well, guess what? This winter is expected to transition towards a negative QBO. Okay, and this hasn't happened for like 28 months. It was actually supposed to happen last winter. And that went into going into last winter's forecast, but that did not happen. So that's happening now this winter, and that could impact our weather. And this has been linked with sudden stratospheric warming events. And so what do these do? Well, when they uh, reverse from westerly to easterly, a polar vortex near the pole can be displaced and broken up. And that's kind of how this is depicted in this pattern right here. So here's your polar vortex right here. See that? See how it's kind of getting breaking up and it's getting dislodged into North America here, the southern uh, parts of Canada, into northern U.S.? Well, we could be dealing with some more polar vortexes uh, than, than usual, kind of those types of patterns where you get some cold Arctic air breaks to kind of break off and go into the northern United States. And uh, so here, here's an example right here. You got it, really cold air mass near the poles and that could break off, split up and break off and uh, potentially even go into the United States. And so that's what our uh, QBO pattern here is potentially looking like. And so winter 2017, 2018 will feature a negative QBO. And uh, what type of uh, you know temperatures are associated with this in general? Well, in general, it favors warmer than average temperatures and some blocking for the northwestern United States with colder than average temperatures for the uh, east half of the United States, especially up towards the lakes in the interior northeastern United States. So we've got to factor this in as well into our forecast. And then factor number three that I think will have a larger impact this winter is the Arctic Oscillation and snowpack. And there is even some, a little bit of research that could suggest low solar activity that has been linked to this uh, Arctic Oscillation. So how's the Arctic ice cover doing? Well, snowpack is a little bit above average here. You know, up here and all the way down into Canada, most of Canada is already under a snowpack, parts of the northwestern United States. And cold air masses are going to build up here in the polar regions with all that snowpack. That's going to, you're going to get some cold high pressure systems. And those are going to kind of sink to the south. Okay, and then when that jet stream comes to the south, you get some low pressure systems. That's really going to funnel some of this air southward into the northern uh, United States here. And so it does appear that we have above average snowpack uh, and the solar minimum right now is kind of occurring. This is uh, 28, 17, 2018 right here. And we are at kind of at the below, you know, towards the solar minimum here. And that could favor a... Uh, more Arctic outbreaks as well. That favors uh, a negative AO dominant winter. Okay, so above average snowpack and below normal sunspot activity would be a negative AO. And so what does that look like? Well, 
A negative AO, a typical pattern for this is a ridging out in the western United States and also in the Gulf of Alaska and troughing to occur out in the eastern half of the United States. So that's going to bring cold temperatures. You're going to get some Arctic air masses up here, high pressure. Cold temperatures are going to build south into the eastern half of the United States with storm systems running up along the coast, okay, and also potentially some clippers, uh, you know, in the northern U.S. However, this is only one factor, so it's not going to just look like this. We got to have to blend these together. So that's what a negative AO looks like. Here's uh, the temperature anomalies. On average, much cooler than average uh, for the eastern half of the United States. I think the uh, start of winter, especially December, January, might look something kind of like this. Now, a couple degrees below average for the northern U.S., especially towards the lakes. That's what December looks like for a negative AO. How about uh, January? A little bit further west. Much the country, though, below, below, below average, with uh, especially below average in the northern U.S. How about February? Uh, especially the uh, central and eastern United States below average, slightly below average. And March, uh, most of the United States below average with um, you know, moderately below average for the northern United States. All right, so putting that all together now, what are the models showing? Well, we're gonna first start off with the IRI model. This is uh, forecasting the probability of above or below normal temperatures, okay? And here's below normal over here and above normal over here. It's got, uh, for January through March, it's got a moderate to high chance for below normal temperatures kind of out in this region, the central plains out to the Midwest here, potentially some out in Western Canada, Southern Alaska, Northwestern United States. Then it has above normal temperatures for the uh, kind of the deep south, southeastern United States, and potentially parts of the uh, northeastern United States here, kind of where those warm coastal waters were. So that's what it's forecasting for temperatures. Now precipitation wise, it's got kind of a La Nina pattern here with above average precipitation out in the Ohio Valley to the Tennessee Valley, below normal temp uh, precipitation for the southern United States, and above normal precipitation out towards uh, the Rocky Mountains and even uh, the northwestern United States and also in much of Alaska as well and Hawaii out there. So that's uh, going to be that. And then uh, we got the CFS model. What's it showing for temperatures? Well, it's been a little bit crazy. I think it's a little overdone, but above average temperatures for much of the United States, a few degrees above average even for the southern United States, and then some below average temperatures for the northwestern United States. So you can see these models, uh, there's a lot of uh, inconsistencies here. Um, and then temperature or uh, precipitation wise, above average for the Tennessee Valley, out for the much uh, and also into much of the northern United States and then parts of the southern US, it has dry, at least there's some consistency there. And then the CANSIPS model kind of looks like the CFS, warmer than average for much of the southern three-fourths of the United States. That's got below average temperatures for the northern United States. Precipitation wise, a little bit different. It's got actually below average precipitation out here and also out here, a little bit above average here and also out here in uh, the uh, Great Lakes region. So putting all of this together, I have uh, developed here my forecast. So what is my forecast? Well, I figured I see a common pattern, a jet pattern that kind of looks like this. You're gonna get some ridging up here. You might get some troughing down here. We shall see on that. You're gonna get some more uh, ridging over here. And then you're gonna get some troughing out here. If I can draw that out in the central and eastern United States, and that's gonna kind of ride up the east coast and you get some ridging up here as well. And so that could be a common pattern. That's not always going to look like that. We could see that quite often. And that's kind of what this is uh, looking like right here. You're going to get some more ridging out in the western United States this winter. Some troughing, especially out in the uh, central eastern United States. What's going to happen is you're going to get some storm systems that kind of form out in this region right here. And that track up into the Ohio Valley in the interior northeastern United States. And on the back side, you're gonna get some snow. So you're gonna get some above average snowfall out in this region. You also might get some storms and some clippers to kind of track out in this region as well. And uh, you could get some above average uh, precipitation out in the northwestern United States. Warmer 
temperatures, drier conditions in the southwestern United States, as well as the southeastern United States. So that's the general pattern. And so what does this look like on a map? So temperature wise, this is my official 27, 2018 temperature forecast for December through March. I am forecasting below average temperatures for much of the northern United States, particularly this area right here, far northern and uh, kind of midwestern areas of the US where there's a greater chance for below average temperatures in that area and slightly below, and a slightly less chance, but still below average for much of the northern United States and potentially interior northeastern United States. Then we got above average temperatures for much of the southern United States, particularly the desert southwest here. That's gonna be your greatest chance and potentially above average for much of the southeastern United States. And then we got equal chances. Uh, so it could either go either way, kind of in between that. And this is especially true for the northeastern United States where we've got warm coastal waters, which could kind of warm the area out here for some of the winter, but we've got a lot of patterns favoring the uh, central and eastern United States to be below average. So equal chances in that region. Precipitation wise, this is what I'm forecasting. I'm forecasting above average uh, precipitation for the northern northwestern United States, especially Oregon and Montana. And then above average precipitation out here in the uh, Midwestern region and the Ohio Valley and potentially the interior northeastern United States as you get closer to Canada. And this is especially uh, the highest probability is gonna be out in the Ohio Valley region and the Great Lakes region, where I think this winter, they do have a much better shot seeing above average uh, precipitation with this pattern and the QBO changing as well. And then we got below average precipitation for the southern third of the United States, especially as you get towards the coast here, especially the southeastern United States and uh, California as well. So that's uh, the precipitation chances, equal chances kind of in between there. So that wraps up the 2017-2018 winter forecast. and. Uh, just a reminder here, we've got a contest going on. Go ahead and comment below where you're from, or you can pick a random city, I don't care. Just uh, comment below a city where you're from, and I'm gonna pick one winner out of that group. They're gonna get signed 11 by 14 print of this image right here that I took. And 10 winners will also receive a winter forecast uh, snowfall guess for their city. So I'm gonna pick 10 winners. And uh, the winners will be chosen throughout December for the snowfall forecast. And I'm also going to pick this winter, and I'm going to pick that after winter ends. So sometime in April, I'll announce the winner for that. So go ahead and comment your guests below. And also comment any questions or things you might have, comments you might have about your uh, winter forecast adventures this year. And go ahead and give this video a like if you liked it. And uh, subscribe. Uh, subscribe. We'll be releasing more forecast videos, snowstorm severe weather forecasting videos, and also forecasting tutorials. So if you've ever wanted to uh, learn about some of the weather, we'll be releasing those as well. So with that all being said, hope you enjoyed today's winter forecast, and I'll see you soon.